Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating and interpreting the standard error of the estimate using Excel. When we hear the term standard error of the estimate, it's usually related to a regression. And the standard error of the estimate is a measure of the accuracy of the predictions made by a regression. So using these fictitious data I have in this worksheet, you can say I have one variable, minutes of study. This is the number of minutes that a participant studies for an exam. And then the second variable, score on exam, is the score that was received that corresponds to the minutes of study. So it refers to the same participant. So this particular participant here, they studied for 45 minutes and their score in the exam was 55. Now we know that not all of the variance in the score will be explained by the minutes of study, but we can develop a confidence interval so that we know what the probability would be that the predicted score would fall between a specific lower bound and a specific upper bound. One of the most common confidence intervals is the 95% confidence interval. And that provides us with a lower and upper limit. And we know that there's a 95% probability that the predicted score will fall between that lower and upper limit. So I'm going to calculate a regression for this independent variable, minutes of study, and this dependent variable, score and exam. I'm going to use the data analysis item under the data ribbon here in Excel. If you don't have this option available, it just needs to be activated. It's an add-in. And you go to File, Options. And this dialog will come up. And you can see there's a section for add-ins. Down here where it says Manage Excel Add-ins, click Go. And then you want to select Analysis Tool Pack. Of course, in this example, I already have it selected. And click OK. And this Data Analysis option will be available to you. Data Analysis Tools. I'm going to click on Data Analysis and bring up the Analysis Tools. You can see there are several here. I'm going to move down to Regression and select that and click OK. Then for Input Y Range, this is the outcome variable. In this case, the score on the exam. So I'm going to select from B1, I'm going to include the label, all the way down to B51. And for the X range, this is the predictor variable. So I'm going to select A51 all the way through A1. I'm going to add in labels because I am using the labels, minutes of study, and the score on the exam. And I'm also going to check confidence level. I'm going to change the 95 to 99. I'll show you how that output is generated. And then for output range, uh, by default and output options, it's going to say new worksheet. I want uh, output range to be a cell on this worksheet. And I'm going to select E3. That comes up E3. And now I'm ready to perform the regression. I'll click OK. And you can see quite a bit of output is generated by Excel here. We have regression statistics. And included here would be the standard error of the estimate, 6.714. We have an ANOVA table, and then moving down, you can see we have the intercept and minutes of study, and for those coefficients, standard error, and a lot of different values. I want to show you here specifically, uh, by default, it's going to generate the lower 95% and the upper 95% for the intercept and the minutes of study. I specified a confidence level of 99%, and that's why this is lower 99 and upper 99 here. Moving down the worksheet, I've used the y equals mx plus b formula. So I can enter a specific value for the minutes of study and have Excel return the predicted score on the exam. So if you look at this 
function here. It takes the minutes of study, multiplies it by the minutes of study coefficient, and then adds the intercept. So that's how I generated the predicted score. And I can change this to any value. Instead of 180, I could use 200, and it'll produce another predicted score, the predicted score that corresponds with this number of minutes of study. So I'll return that back to 180. And now we want to generate the confidence interval for 68%, 95%, and 99%. And for this, we'll need the standard error of measurement. Now, that was returned up here, the 6.714. But I'm going to show you another way that you can compute the standard error of the estimate in Excel. We'll start with equal sign and ST e y x that's the function standard error of the estimate and first it's going to ask for the known y's that's the outcome variable so I move over here we can see that score in exam and I'm just going to select the values here not the label so it'd be b2 through b51 then a comma then the known x's so these are the minutes of study this is the predictor variable the independent variable. And you can see it comes back with the same exact value, 6.714. So let's use this value to calculate the upper and lower limits for these various confidence intervals. So we want to use this score on the exam, and we want to build an upper limit and a lower limit that corresponds to this particular confidence interval. We'll start with the 68% confidence interval. Now I've calculated the z-score here for all these confidence intervals, but really for the 68% confidence interval the z-score would be equal to 1. Now you see I've typed in precisely 68%, so the z-score is 0.99. That's because within one standard error of the estimate, the confidence interval is actually equal to this value here. And you can see if I expand this out and display more digits to the right of the uh, decimal place. So if I copy this value, control C, and I move over to the confidence interval here, and I paste just the value, not going to change the formatting. You can see that the z-score changes to exactly 1. So this is the precise percent of values that would fall within one standard error of the estimate of the predicted score. So to generate the upper limit here I would just need to take the score on the exam and I'm going to, after selecting that, press F4 to make that an absolute reference. And then I'm going to add the standard error of the estimate. And again, I'm going to press F4 to make that an absolute reference. This will give me the upper limit value. And for the lower, again, select the score and exam. And in this case, subtract the standard error of the estimate. So the lower limit is 65, the upper limit is 78. I'm going to autofill the same function to the right and make some changes to it for the 95% confidence interval. So in this case, the change we'll make is instead of taking the predicted score in the exam and adding the standard error of the estimate, we're going to add the score in the exam to the standard error of the estimate multiplied by the corresponding z-score for the 95% confidence interval. So I'm just going to add parentheses here and multiply the standard error of the estimate by the z-score. And that's the same procedure for the lower limit, except, of course, we're going to subtract. 
So again, I'll put the parentheses in, multiply the standard error of the measurement by the corresponding z-score, and that gives us a lower limit of 58 and an upper limit of 85. Now I'm going to select the cell here with the z-score so you can see the function. It's norm.s.inv and it's the, click into it here, you can see it's the 95% value plus 1 minus 95% divided by 2. That's the function to arrive at the value 1.96. And what I mean by corresponding z-score is that we know that 95% of all the scores are going to fall between a z-score of negative 1.96 to positive 1.96. Similarly, we can generate a z-score for the 99% confidence interval. It's the same function, except we have the value of 99% instead of 95. And I can autofill this over and I don't have to make any other changes because it updated from 95 to 99 while the other cells stayed locked because they're absolute references. The reference to the 95 value was relative so I could autofill and it would update. So we see now we have both the lower and upper limits for the 68% confidence interval and then the 95% confidence interval, and you can see there's a greater difference between the lower and upper limit for the 95s compared to the 68. And then to have a range where we can be 99% confident that our predicted score uh, will fall, you can see that the difference between the upper and lower limits expand even more. So it's 54 all the way to 89 can adjust the minutes of a study to any value that we want and it'll dynamically produce the predicted score and dynamically update the upper and lower limits. So instead of 180 minutes, if we wanted to see what the predicted score would be for two hours of studying, that'd be 120 minutes. See it's 59 and of course that changes the upper and lower limits for the three different confidence intervals that I've calculated here. I hope you found this video on calculating and interpreting the standard error of the estimate in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.